So first topic, weight gain in pregnancy. Um, now I know this can be one of the biggest things on the mind of pregnant people, uh, or some pregnant people, and it's compounded by the fact that bodies change and this can be visible to others who can you know, feel open to making comments. So I want you to just take a moment, or I, I invite you to take a moment, if you want to, to just think about what messages you might have received about your own body in pregnancy. Whether this be comments from friends, family, loved ones, or maybe you've been weighed or you've been given guidance on how much weight you should or you feel, you know, you've been told you should gain in pregnancy. And I just want you to think about how this has made you feel and whether it has had an effect on your eating in any way. Has it made you question yourself? Has it made, made you second guess yourself? I just want you to, yeah, think about your own experiences. And in terms of weight gain, the key thing that I want to highlight here is that weight gain is never an inherently a bad thing. And weight gain during pregnancy is necessary and it's a good thing. So most of the weight that you'll gain during pregnancy will be your growing baby, of course, but also the growth of a whole new organ. So your placenta, the fluids in your womb, the blood supply to your placenta, uh, or the, you know, the additional blood that you create to uh, supply the placenta, changes in your body, breast tissue, and you might also experience changes in your body in areas that just aren't around your bump. And that's totally okay too, maybe in your face, maybe in your buttocks. Um, but I just want to reiterate that your body knows what it's doing. And I have heard some horror stories from clients and colleagues about people being told to lose weight during pregnancy, which is really not okay because that can pose risks to uh both uh you know you and the baby um and actually restricting your diet or trying to control your weight or you know excessively trying to exercise during pregnancy to lose weight can actually cause nutritional deficiencies to both you and your baby and affect your baby's development and growth so if a healthcare instru in, uh, professional instructs you to lose weight during pregnancy then I encourage you to ask them to document that in their notes and ask for a second opinion. Um, because not only is weight loss really very rarely achievable or sustainable when you're not pregnant, being told to lose or monitor your weight during pregnancy isn't going to make your body sort of magically be able to produce less fluid or blood or make a smaller placenta. Um, so, yeah, your body knows what it's doing. Um, and there are lots of things that are outside of your control when it comes to weight gain. Um, in terms of how much weight you should gain, well, there's actually no formal guidelines. So the UK um, doesn't have any formal evidence based guidelines on what the appropriate amount of weight to gain is during pregnancy. And the, the US as well, they have recommended some weight gain ranges for each stage of pregnancy, but they're not black and white. And they, you know, they state that they need further research to support them. Um, so, of course, it's OK to have some awareness of your body weight and body weight gain. Um, and that's something that you can discuss with your you know, healthcare team, your midwife, midwife. Um, but you're, you know, if you're eating in a way that's working for you, you're moving in a way that's working for you. You're doing the best you can. It's normal. It's necessary to gain weight. Your body knows what it's doing. And it's not uncommon for healthcare providers to sort of make judgment based on your weight gain as to whether you're eating well or exercising well and we know that women and birthing people can gain weight appropriately and have very poor nutrition and likewise likewise they may gain above or below those kind of recommended limits and still have really great habits and lifestyle habits so I think discussions around weight gain in pregnancy needs to move beyond the scale um you might be weighed in pregnancy, and the reason you might be weighed is to assess for certain health conditions. Um, and weighing, you know, uh, being weighed in pregnancy, it began as a strategy to make sure the parent and therefore baby was well nourished. 
Um, but if it's uncomfortable for you or being weighed is not good, any good for your mental health, then there are lots more sort of reliable and less stigmatizing ways um, for testing of testing for most of the issues that might arise during your pregnancy, including nutritional status. So if your doctor or your midwife wants to weigh you, then it's well within your rights to ask them why they want to and what additional information that's going to give um you know, give them about you or your baby and whether there's another way of testing for that condition that could be more effective. So it's well within your rights to decline being weighed. Um, so just as a final reminder on that section on weight gain in pregnancy, um, prioritise nourishment, let your body do its thing, it knows what it's doing and pregnancy shouldn't be about specific weight, rather it's about making the safest home for growing your human. <laughs> um, which brings me on to the subject of, well, what if you're pregnant and you're in a larger body? Um, because it's not uncommon to be lumped into a high risk category purely based on weight or BMI, which is a measure of your weight to height ratio um, when all other mar markers are normal. Um, and this, coupled with the representation or, or the low representation of diverse bodies in pregnancy and maternal care, can leave anyone that doesn't really fit into that societal idea of what a pregnant body should be, which is the vast majority. There's a lot of people that don't fit into that standard. Um, it can leave you prone to feeling excluded or like you need to change your body in order to have a safe and enjoyable pregnancy, which isn't true. Um, but being of a high weight in pregnancy can impact how often you're monitored, your choices. So this is your cue to do your research, basically know your rights, know what you want, know what you don't want, and to listen to your own body and gut because you're worthy of having your needs met regardless of your size. Um, and unfortunately, weight-based discrimination does exist in healthcare and feeling like you're going to be treated differently due to your size can feel quite anxiety-provoking, which we don't need any more anxiety in pregnancy, right? Um, so... Being in a larger body in pregnancy, I think the thing that gets brought up is, is risks and complications and all of that. Um, but being in a larger body doesn't mean that your pregnancy is going to be any more complicated or dangerous or different to anyone else's. And we know that many of the conditions that are linked to um, that increased risk of being in a, when being in a larger body can occur in people of any size. Um, and the American College of Obstetricians and Gynecologists, their guidance acknowledges that there are some risks associated being with a uh, being in a body with a higher BMI. Um, but in the same line, it also states that you can have a healthy pregnancy if you're of a higher weight. So um, if you're in your um, on your uh, in your second pregnancy as well, or third or fourth or fifth, the guidance in the UK um, it notes that most people will have uncomplicated pregnancies and a study in 2013 found that previous pregnancies were a much more accurate prediction of whether you might require medical in intervention during labour than a person's body mass. Um, so that's just something to be aware of. Um, one thing that's really important to be aware of is, um, is risk. And that's the thing that's talked about most often, whether you're in a larger body or not, to be honest. Um, but it's important when it comes to understanding risks and complications in pregnancy, um, if you're in a larger body, um, it's important to understand what's meant by that risk. So there's a difference between a relative risk and an absolute risk. So to give you an example, if you're told that you could double your chances of winning the lottery by buying an extra ticket but the the original chance was one in a million you've doubled your chance to two in a million so yes you're twice as likely to win but the overall chance is still very low and the same applies to health so even if the higher there's a higher relative risk of complication during pregnancy there might be a still be a really small chance overall so that doesn't mean that you're irresponsible to take that risk. And that's why it's important to know your rights, know what that risk means. And so if a doctor mentions risk related to your weight, then just ask them, well, what, 
what's the absolute risk, that exact risk, rather than the relative risk compared to other people. So disordered eating and eating disorders in pregnancy. Um, you might not think this is relevant to you, um, and I know you're probably itching to get onto the nutrition-y stuff, um, but actually around 30% of people um, can, well, research has suggested that dis disordered eating can affect around 30% of pregnant women. And I say women, that is, you know, I say that uh, is women because that's the group of people that were researched. Um, and approximately 7.5% of women at their first ultrasound were suffering from a diagnosable eating disorder. And the interesting thing about this is that eating disorders and disordered eating aren't screened for, often aren't, pick, aren't picked up. Um, and so, it's, and it's also estimated that um, it's quite often underreported. So the stats I imagine are a lot higher. So if we've got, you know, uh, 100 people listening to this, 30 might ha be having a difficult time. Um, and this can be due to messages that we receive from our culture about food and bodies. There can be a lot of pressure at this time, especially when the body is rapidly changing. So um, when it comes to knowing like what is disordered eating, what's eating disorders, I, I like to sit on a spectrum where you've kind of got normal eating at the end of the spectrum. You've got diagnosable eating, eating disorders at this end of the spectrum. So there's a kind of um, diagnostic criteria to um, being diagnosed with an eating disorder. And then there's a whole host of stuff in the middle. Um, and they tend to be the people that I, I often work with um, that just have a bit of a problematic relationship with food, but don't feel like they're kind of problematic enough to fall into an eating disorder category. And a lot of these um, behaviours are also quite normalised as well in our society. So these behaviours that can be more in line with disordered eating might be things like frequently dieting, having anxiety associated with food or eating, or feeling guilty about your eating or ashamed. Um, you might be preoccupied with weight or shape or size. Um, you might not be able to be around certain foods or have food in the house because you feel out of control around it. Um, you might feel like you need to exercise or eat less to try and compensate for what you've eaten. And so these could be some signs that you're displaying some difficulties with food. Um, and in terms of having an eating disorder, if you've got a current or past eating disorder, it's important that you make your healthcare team aware of this. Because attempting to avoid weight gain or engaging in sort of disordered eating behaviours um, with food can pose, could pose some risks to your baby. Um, you know, could pose risks for you with depression, anxiety, but could also cause low birth weights, uh, miscarriage, preterm birth, and problems like that. Um, uh, problems with milk supply as well. And I don't say this to like scare you at all. I'm saying this because it's actually a great time in pregnancy to kind of address um, address some of these things and get the support that you need.